Hello everybody, welcome to a team new stream with a little bit of a difference. Neil is not with me. I cannot tell you how many different tech issues we have had over the last three days when usually we have absolute, well, very minimal tech issues I would say. So you've got just me, and let's be honest, Neil is the man in the know with the team news. Uh, there hasn't been a huge amount of press conferences in terms of Premier League stuff anyway because uh, obviously we've got FA Cup and stuff and a lot of the matches are late next week. Um, so I'm doing a little bit different. I'm just going to go through what we've got on Twitter. If you want an absolute full roundup, my recommendation will be to check out the team news article at five. And obviously there's a team news section on fantasy football scout as well, uh, which will be updated throughout the day, including predicted lineups and stuff like that. Otherwise I'm going to, um, I'm going to pop out the chat so I can read it. So this is going to be a bit more interactive this stream, right? I think that's probably what I'm better at than giving you the, the team news like Neil does. So we're going to go through basically the Scout Twitter feed and just see what's going on right now. And then we'll just talk about it as we go. Obviously, you know, if there's uh, if there's if there's injuries for like Norwich and stuff, probably not too concerned right now. Um, but maybe for other teams, uh, we might be a little bit more. So Nigel Pearson, first off, Watford. Um, no new injury concerns. We'll have a look again today at whether players have picked up anything. That's not necessarily a major problem. Uh, and obviously the matches are quite quick in succession, so we'd expect maybe a little bit. The loading of players in the heat is something we need to be aware of. So maybe some concerns there. I mean, I, I've only got Foster from Watford. I guess people have got Saar, but no specific um, news there. Daniel Farker, very similar for Norwich. Um, assess, assessing Josip Dermic. Maybe I've not pronounced that right. For a knock to his ankle, but there are no other new injury concerns. Obviously, they did rest quite a few players before um, before that last Premier League game against Everton, which was I was a little bit surprised to be honest because they're not um, they're not fully relegated just yet. So to save players maybe for the FA Cup seemed a little bit strange. Um, they didn't get battered to be fair. They only lost one nil, but they still didn't win the game, right? So that's a bit. Um, interesting i've also got like a load of stuff who to follow uh sean dyche says there's an outside chance obviously they've been missing some of their their key strikers um chris wood ashley barnes as well so they've had um vidra and uh um j rod up front instead uh who did take away the foster clean sheet very uh very frustrating this week uh, the weather will be... A, I'm reading the chat at the same time. The weather will be a bit cooler this weekend. Shouldn't be as much of an issue as anticipated. Hope so. It's pretty warm here, although I'm in Ireland, so a little bit far away from the action. Uh, but yeah, Sondage, um said Chris Wood, basically, and Robbie Brady might be available for the match. I think that would be big for them. Uh, although it was a nice victory against Watford, to be fair. And Ashley Barnes is still a bit too far away from recovery. Brendan Rodgers, Leicester, no new injury concerns. Um, so nothing to worry about there if you're still holding the likes of Vardy. Uh, obviously, Harvey Barnes didn't start the last game, so that's a little bit of a concern now. But if you've got any other Leicester players, you're probably looking pretty good. Here's the big one. This is the big one. Th this got me thinking today. So Klopp's come out for Liverpool, uh, as expected. Getting these kind of record points tallies sounds pretty nice to me. That's what we thought. They might want to chase some of the records that are going on right now. Um because six, but sorry, I'm not sure it's possible because six of the uh, remaining seven games are played in a very short period of time. Every three days, we will have to make a lot of changes. Now, we hear managers say that sometimes, and it doesn't necessarily happen. They do make changes, not necessarily to our players. Uh, you know, just because he says he's going to make a lot of changes, doesn't mean that Salah, Mane, Firmino are going to miss out on every single game. Doesn't mean that Trent and Robertson are suddenly going to be rotated loads, but. It has put the thought in my mind now a little bit more of a worry maybe about owning these Liverpool players if they're not going to be playing week in, week out. So maybe it's not frustration, but a slight concern there or a slight uh, something to think about. Like I, I immediately looked at Liverpool's fixtures because I know they're good from game week 33, but I want to deep dive into just how good. And more, more importantly, when I might actually captain their players. Um, let me just close this down a sec going to bring the chat up on screen so I can see what you guys are talking about. Um, so obviously Man City away. I mean, to be fair, plenty of people are thinking about captaining uh, Liverpool players this week, Mane and Salah. So that's absolutely fair enough. Aston Villa at home. That was the key one. That's really where I'd want players. And to be honest, if, if the crowd was there, I'd absolutely want to captain Liverpool player against Aston Villa at home. First get home game after winning the title. But obviously it doesn't matter because the crowd aren't there. So it's not quite the same... Uh, maybe sentimental value or whatever it might be for that game. 
chances are they'll play with even more freedom, potentially, or they just won't care. I mean, certain players, like Salah's still going to care, isn't he? He's still going to want that golden boot. He's going to want those personal records as well as the points records. How many minutes he gets between now and then is, I guess, the problem. Uh, so Villa, away, uh, Villa at home looks good. Brighton away, Burnley at home are decent as well. Then it's Arsenal away, Chelsea at home, Newcastle away. So for me at least, because I'm trying to chase, I'm, I'm trying to think outside the box where I can. I think only Aston Villa from the remaining six games, I would probably look at captain in. I think outside of that, I might look at like Man United players potentially or um, even Man City players instead, just to do something a little bit different. Obviously, a lot of people are now drawn to Man United after Martial's hat-trick. I still think a lot of people are going to captain Man City players, both for this week and for Aston Villa as well. So that would be interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think about that, and I'll get back to them as we go through the rest. But it doesn't look uh, doesn't look maybe as good for Liverpool. But at the end of the day, I think this is one of the key decisions. If you keep those players going forward and they do really well, then you're going to, you're going to make massive gains on uh, the likes of me who might be stupid enough to get rid. So we'll have to wait and see what we what happens there. Uh, what other teams we've got? Arsenal. Um, Kieran Tierney is available for selection after suffering cramp. It was quite funny. There was another quote, which I don't have to hand. Um, but basically he said, the weather in Scotland isn't quite... This is what Arteta said about Tierney. He said, the weather in Scotland is not the same as in England. He needs to get used to it. I mean, I know Scotland's weather is different, but I don't know if it's that much different to where he comes to England and suddenly can't cope with the hot weather. Um, but he did say something along those lines. So he's available for selection after suffering cramp during the win over Southampton. Uh, Chambers knee, Mari ankle, Martinelli knee are out for the season. But David Luiz is available after suspension. So they might make a change at centre back. Although, to be fair, uh, it'd be interesting to see what uh, predicted lineup uh, Neil, sorry, forgetting everyone's name, what predicted lineup uh, Neil goes with. Because Holden was pretty good. I would say, in that Southampton game. Didn't have a lot to do, um, not really. I mean, Danny Ings had a few chances here and there, and Southampton did attack well in the second half especially, but I thought Holden did okay. So whether or not Louise will come straight back in, I'm not sure. I mean, they just got an away clean sheet, so potentially they want to keep it, but they have given Louise a contract extension. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. Bird Leno is targeting a return to full training in four to six weeks. I mean, that's pretty much going to keep him out for the whole season. Like, four weeks would take you, what, towards, like, the 20th of July? And the 26th of July, I think, is the last um, is the last game anyway. So, unlikely to get um, much more out of Leno. So, I think um, I think Martin is looking pretty good. 4.2 million first game, or first proper full game, gets a clean sheet. So, if you went for him at 4.2 million, I've got to be honest, I'm a little bit jealous that I, I uh, won't foster. So, over the coming weeks, can Arsenal get a few more clean sheets? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Cedric Suarez um, knows he's aiming to be available for Sunday's FA Cup time. I, mean, I don't see him getting in ahead of Bellerin anyway. Uh, and Torreira Anker was hopeful of being back in training in the coming days. I think he would be a big um, a big asset for Arsenal actually going forward for the next few weeks in central midfield. Uh, he's someone that could make a difference, but I don't think we're going to see much of a difference from um, Cedric coming back. I don't think he's going to start playing instead of Bellerin, but I guess it would provide a little bit more competition because it doesn't look... Like Maitland Niles is gonna um, be starting a right back anytime soon. Let's see what else we got here. We got all we got all the promotional stuff. Scout cast. Uh, Hasan Hootel says that Pierre uh, Emil Hoiberg ankle uh, and Buffal thigh have to be assessed ahead of the weekend. I think I have to try and find it, but I'm pretty sure he also said something about having to rest players this weekend. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to get it wrong. So let me just uh, let me just quickly have a look. Yeah, I can't remember. I might come back to that one because I think he said something else about resting. I don't know if I got the quote to hand. Uh, I might try and find it in a sec, just in case. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's Pulisic. Um, oh, yeah. He says something like, we will need some fresh players for the weekend. Yesterday was intense and we'll, we'll be against the side fighting for their life. Um, so we might see some rotation. Whether or not that's Danny Ings, I don't know. I think he's probably the key player people are worried about. I'm actually thinking of getting rid of Danny Ings this week. Probably to Enketia, um, just to get some money. But if I if I get really crazy and get rid of Salah, I might get uh, someone like Kane or Aubameyang in. But right now, I think Danny Ings is probably... At, I think we already knew that, though, right? He's probably at risk of rotation at some point um, before the end of the season. Whether or not it'll be him this week or not, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Sheffield United. Chris Wilder says that Lise Mousse... I mean, that, the problem with me having to do this instead of Neil... Is I have to butcher all the names, whereas usually I let Neil do that. Uh, Musa should be fit to train ahead of Sheffield United's FA Cup clash with Arsenal after being taken off. I mean, 
They really didn't provide much threat against Man United, and they haven't done from an attacking point all season. Jack O'Connor will be assessed over the next 24 hours and is improving every day. It'd be interesting to see how long he takes to come back because the rumours were at the start that he was going to be out for the season and Chris Wilder's kind of said that's not true the whole way through. Um, so I don't know when he's going to be back. It's, it, I mean, it sounds like he is going to be back before the end of the season, but how long it takes. I think for people looking at maybe Sheffield, uh, looking for Spurs players this week against Sheffield United... It's probably not going to be as easy as it was for Man United because Egan and Henderson are going to be back. Egan's uh, not suspended anymore and Henderson obviously is not playing against his loan club. O'Connell's still a big miss, but maybe not as big a miss as uh, those two were. So I still think Spurs players are probably looking okay for Sheffield United, but maybe not quite uh, as good as it was for Man United. And, and to be fair, if it's saying Jack O'Connell will be assessed over the next 24 hours and is proving every day, there is a chance, of course, he's back for that Spurs game and then it's even more tough for them. So... We'll have to wait and see if there's any more news on that. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer ahead of Man United's FA Cup quarterfinal on Saturday. With the long layoff we've had, this is what he said, with the long layoff we've had, looking after the players is one of our jobs. And as you say, rotation. We play Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and then Saturday again. Are there any new injuries? No. I think we came through unscathed. It's still two and Zebby and Phil Jones who are out. They're not going to make any difference anyway. My opinion is Man United are not going to rotate that often in the league. I just don't think they can afford to while there's still a chance of top four or even top five. Um, and obviously, top five doesn't necessarily get a Champions League place, but it might do this year. If Man City get banned from the Champions League, which we don't know yet and we won't know till July... So I, I'm not. I've got three main United players. I'm not expecting too much rotation. Look, could we see a Gardo or Greenwood play up front in Martial? We could, but the guys just scored a hat trick. The key, obviously, is going to be how many players play in the FA Cup. Right? I think Bruno Fernandes is a really fit player, um, and we'll just keep on going and going and going. Same with Rashford. Probably the same with Pogba to a certain extent. Martial maybe not quite so much, but I'm not expecting rotation to be honest. Maybe it'll happen. That's just my view. Um, but not too, uh, n- not too concerned to be honest about my main United players. I may even captain one of them this week. Uh, let's do a few questions before I get onto the rest of the news we have. Um, Egan or Target? Uh, I can't remember who Aston Villa are playing. I should know that though, shouldn't I? <laughs> who are Aston Villa playing again? Oh, Wolves. I mean, I would expect Wolves to score, but to be honest, I would expect Spurs to score as well. Um, I mean, Target's maybe got a little bit more attacking threat. Maybe go target because Aston Villa haven't defended that badly since they come back, or not as bad as they were before. Uh, play Enketia over Trent. I mean, I, I, there's not many players I would like to to bench Trent Alexander Arnold for. I mean, Enketia does have one of the best fixtures this week, and Norwich at home. But um, yeah, not sure uh, that one's for me to be honest. I'd probably play Trent just about, even if it is uh, Man City. Doherty and Jota or Sice and Rashford. Sice and Rashford, I think, uh, for me. I think Doherty does provide a bit more attacking threat than Sice, but I'm not sure it's that much to warrant going for Jota over Rashford. Um, so, yeah. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Press conference times, we don't need that. I think there is some more. The annoying thing is I've got all the screens set up for all the actual <laughs> the actual team news, but um, the problem is it's got two webcams. One of them's Neil, and he's not there. Uh, I think that actually might be all the team news we have. So I think anything else, like Callum Wilson's going to miss game week 32 and 33. I'm not sure. Too many people are looking at him anyway. Uh, Mikel Arteta, we've had an actual proper update since then that Tierney's going to be available. So I think that is probably all the main team news we have for now. Um, let me just have a quick look at the stuff that I prepared earlier. So Arsenal, so Aston Villa, hang on a sec. Uh, I'll just go through the, you won't be able to see him, but I'll just go through him. So, Aston Villa, uh, on, on, so Dean Smith on John McGinn. We are having to manage him. He's trying to recapture the form he had previously. It's very difficult to do that because he has first got to get his match fitness up. Each game, he's getting better at regaining that. I mean, if people are still holding on to McGinn, I don't really see an issue if you, if you made the decision to hold him anyway. I'd say he's going to keep starting. He'll keep having his minutes managed. Uh, we did, we've done Leicester, we've done Burnley, Liverpool, Man United, Newcastle, uh, Steve Bruce says um, Newcastle United will assess Isaac Hayden, and who I own actually, he's on my bench, and Matt Ritchie for muscle injuries ahead of the FA Cup quarter final tie with Man City. So it doesn't actually sound like Ritchie's necessarily going to be out for a while. If you did get him in for a punt last week, it could be interesting to maybe keep him. Um, but there are plenty, there's so many defenders I think to be honest right now who you could get in that maybe it's not worth holding him because Newcastle's fixtures are pretty good um it's Bournemouth if he plays in that one and then 
West Ham at home. But after that, it's not actually fantastic. City, Man City, Watford, Spurs. So maybe take your eight points and run with Richie, um, potentially. Uh, Norwich, we already went through. Same with uh, Southampton. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all the team news I had to hand. Like I said, to get the proper stuff... The st- I, would, I would check out Neil's team news uh, article which is coming out of five and there is a team news tab on Fantasy Football Scout as well if you want to check with, uh, with tech stuff today um, I'll just answer some questions from the chat I don't know if I can pull my team up actually I can but I've made this way too small hang on let me make this bigger this is my team right now just in case anyone's injured uh, I won't show you the I'll show you the subs Oh, this is awful. Here we go. All right, it's a bit smaller. Foster's cut off, but look, we know it's Foster and Goal. This is my team right now. Uh, let's let's see some questions. Jimenez captain. Um, I think Jimenez is the... The thing I like about Jimenez is he's playing tomorrow. We know... Well, we haven't seen any injury news from Wolves um, to say that he's injured. So I'm not really too concerned about that either. So he is the postman, he always delivers. So he's going to get you something. Is it going to be explosive? Probably not. But if you're worried about other players playing in the FA Cup and stuff, maybe it's good to uh, go for him. Just remember, though, certain certain teams like Liverpool, Spurs, they don't have FA Cup fixtures. Um, so Liverpool, like Man City do, Liverpool don't. So Liverpool, Martial captain. That's what I've got currently. I mean, the problem with Martial is there's obviously that thought that goes through your head. Um, can he do it again? But I just think, I think Sheffield United was a good fixture for him. I think Brighton will be a good fixture for him. I think Bournemouth will be a good one after that. So I'm tempted just to go for him again. But I think for my team, I'm probably looking between Fernandez, Martial and Jimenez. But Salah is an outside shot for me as well. It feels weird saying that because Salah's so good. Um, but it is what it is. Will Enketia start again? Look, don't get me wrong. It'd be much easier to um, guess that if we could look at the... Uh, if, if we could see the FA Cup lineups before the next game. But I've got a feeling that um, Lack will only want him for that Norwich game. And then if I bring him in, he'll then become my bench option. I'll upgrade Hayden the week after, maybe to a Pulisic or a Mares or something like that. You'll load up on Liverpool Man City players. You're contemplating using your free hit to switch out to Spurs and Man United. Should you save the free hit for game week 38? I mean, it's impossible to know what's going to happen by game week 38, isn't it? It depends how much you think that Liverpool and Man City game is... Is a big deal, right? If you think there's going to be no goals in that and the players you've got are going to blank, then yeah, maybe just use it now. Man United in great form. Spurs have got a good fixture. Like I said earlier, it's probably not as good as it was for Man United. But I think I think Kane looks a little bit better. Not back to his best, but a little bit better. You just have to hope that if you're going to load up on the likes of Sun, that he comes inside a bit for a bit more because he was um, he was quite wide, although obviously he did nearly score as well. Like literally, like a boot offside, if that. Um, is tripping up on Man City a good option? I think it's a big differential with a lot of potential. That rhymes. That was good to me, wasn't it? A big differential with a lot of potential. De Bruyne, Jesus, and Mares. Look, are they going to start every single week? No. Are the fixtures great? Yes. Are they got potential for huge points? Absolutely, yes. And they're pretty good prices in terms of like Jesus versus Vardy, Aubameyang, Kane, uh, and Mares versus most midfielders as well. Kane for captain. I've seen a lot of people suddenly starting looking at Kane captain. Look, I think <laughs> I think he did look better. Though I suddenly expect him to get two or three goals, not necessarily. But I think this week is similar to last week in that there are a lot of there's a lot of variation in captain picks. But last week it's because there were so many good options. This week it's because we're not really too sure what to do. Um so if you want to go differential with Kane, absolutely go for it. What else we got here? Came for captain, yeah. Well, well, it'd be interesting to see if people do that. Aurier, Aurier or Alonso. If I knew Alonso was definitely going to start, I'd probably go with him. I think Chelsea actually defended okay against Man City. And he has started the last five games. Uh, I see a lot of people now going towards Aspilicueta because he's pretty much nailed on. He's a bit cheaper than Alonso. But I don't know. I like Alonso, to be honest. Yeah, but Aurier is a great option, too. But if you think Alonso is going to start, he he would be the one I would go for, I think. But try and ignore the stats, though, because already stats were not great. Um, and he was super attacking against West Ham. Just didn't really, on paper, didn't create that many chances, but he did get forward uh, a lot. All right, I think I'm going to leave it there because <clears throat> I think that's all the team news done. Um, and like I said, 
If you want to check out the team news on the website, fantasyfootballscout.co.uk, go and check it out. There'll be an hour court at five. All the t- There's a team news tab as well, which I'm sure you've seen before. In fact, can I bring it up? Team news. Yeah, this is the tab you want to be... Oh, look. <laughs> this is the tab you want to be checking out if I don't mess up with all the, the pictures on the screen. So go on to fantasyfootballscout.co.uk, click on the team news tab, and you have all the predicted lineups. Obviously, this one's not been updated yet. It tells you when it was last updated, but none of the latest news has been put in. But all this will be updated by the end of the day. So this is where to get all the latest uh, injury news and stuff. So make sure make sure you go and check that out. Like the stream if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're around here. Hopefully we'll be back next week or next game week with a proper team news uh, stream. Apologies for the issues today, but hopefully I wasn't that bad on my own. But obviously nowhere near as good as Neil, but that's just the way it is. Good luck in Game Week 32. I'll catch you again soon. Chisel.